Hi friends, welcome to the Yoga Still. My name is Chrissy, and my hope is that this will become your home for all things woo curious. I am a yoga teacher, I am a Reiki healer, and I collect a lot of things that help me to feel um, grounded and to keep me curious. So I'm going to start um, giving tours of the decks that I use the most often. Over the last few years, I've collected quite a few and um, I'm gonna be sharing my favorites. So this is the Amethyst Oracle. This is by Jessica Bott. She is the Cracked Amethyst on Instagram. I was really lucky to end up with one of the final decks um, of this series. I, when I found her, I'm not sure how it showed up in my Instagram feed. It's been several years ago. There were just a few of these Oracle decks left and the tarot decks have also been discontinued. And I would love to get my hands on a tarot deck, but that just hasn't been huh, in the cards for me. I, puns, I'm sorry. I'm sorry when they accidentally happen, I get really happy. So the backs of these cards are just beautiful. We have the moon and the star and keys and um, and the three crystals surrounded by the wreath of flowers. I just, I think this deck is stunning. This deck did not come with a guidebook of any sort, which I also really love because um, it really taught me to use my intuition in how I read and to not have any preconceived notions from the creator of the deck. Now I understand when I, um, it, I was already comfortable reading to some degree when I found this deck. I can see how lack of a guidebook could be overwhelming, but um, for me, it was really helpful. So we'll just flip through the deck. We have perspective, looking up um, into the world from the ground instead of looking down. I love precarious. Protection, this is one of my two favorite cards in the deck. If you can see in the back, there's like there's rocks to sit on in the back. So there's, so even though it's a little um, rambunctious and unpredictable and, you know, rowdy, at the base of the waterfall, there's still protection available. Resistance can either be resistance we're creating or we're coming up against. Summer, order. I drew this card today actually for the members of the still. Ritual. Okay, this is another one of my favorites, magic. Um, this looks a whole lot like um, my favorite crystal. Science. Nostalgia. There's another card that's very nostalgic for me. I'll share it when it comes up. What I love about the water card is it shows us all of the different perspectives. We have the rain, which we often think of as being troublesome, but we also have the calm water underneath. So I like this, um, the duality, the reminder that exists within this card. And then we also have the locust, that's um, the lotus, <laughs> that's grown up from the dirt at the bottom. We have air, secret. What I love about the secret card is you can see the light that's coming out of the keyhole and underneath the door so that not all parts of the secret is, are scary. The passing of time, winter. When I see this card, I love the concept of just going with the flow. Um, the jellyfish has its own protective gear, right? Um, it's not, um, by going with the flow, by leaning into things, doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're not protecting yourself. But there is this air of, I can go with the flow and still be sure and strong in who I am. Poison. Nights. Innocence. 
Confinement is another one, another card that I feel is super, um, has a lot to teach us right now. We, I'm recording this in August of 2020, um, when the pandemic is, um, is still very real. And what I love about this card and um, the guidance, the insight it can provide, provide us in this current time is we're all safe in our own little bubbles, but we're still part of a collective. So remembering that even within our confinement, we're still part of a whole. I don't think I've ever actually drawn overwhelm for me or anyone else. It's an interesting card. Tranquility, fire, wish. We drew this one today too. Lava lamp is the other card for me that's very nostalgic. It reminds me of college. Um, I, in, when uh, one year when I was in college, we bought my mom a, um, <laughs> a lava lamp. That was the Grinch. My mom loves the Grinch. And it's still set up in my house every Christmas at mom and dad's. And there's something about a lava lamp to me that is just like, go back to when times were simpler. Um, that what is huge, the troubles that are huge right now, will not be the troubles that are huge in a year or 10 or 15 or 20. And that's how I choose to read. That's what this card means to me. Autumn spring just a little bit peeping through collection there's things from so many other cards that are present we have um, the mushrooms from poison we have a lot from science the skull was also on the shelf during order so i think this is also a really fun representation of the collection of this deck as well chaos even though things are chaotic they can still be beautiful Fear. Oh, this is my favorite card. Labyrinths are very, very special to me. And I love this card. Love this card. The truth card reads very X-Files to me. Makes me smile. Empty. Day. Silence, which I love because it can be read either way. I like the cards you can flip. Omen, solitude, even in solitude, we can still adorn ourselves and feel beautiful. Again, such a good pandemic card to draw. Refresh, destruction, creation, lies, Chai, earth, and energy. So just as an example of how I would use these cards, I tend to prefer when I draw for myself or for others, I do a three card draw. A card, uh, the first card represents who we are today what we're currently bringing to the table. The second card represents what is crossing our path, what is coming to us. And then the third card represents guidance. It's how we can respond, how we can react to who we are and to what is coming, what is crossing our path. So I'll go ahead and do a little draw for us. And I trust that whenever you see this, that um, there'll be room for you to apply whatever comes out here to your life with a sense of curiosity. So looking at this read, who we are, what's crossing our path, and our guidance for this process. So who we are is leaning into some sense of tranquility. Now, this doesn't mean that we're coming from necessarily a peaceful place to lean into this. 
Um, even though there's tranquility here, I see this as swamp, so there's probably alligators floating around. Um, but we find tranquility anyway. And this could be just one breath that you take today. Even one breath that brings peace or calm. It could be lighting a candle while you take your shower, while you wash your face. Just bringing in an opportunity to experience a little bit of tranquility, even if there's a lot of chaos in your day. What's crossing our path is poison. <laughs> and I laugh because whenever I see this card, I don't think about like what's actually poisonous. I think about the Bell Bib DeVoe song. And I think you can't trust a big butt and a smile every time I see this card. And what I like about it is we're not we're not ingesting the poison, right? When we when we see this card, we see the mushrooms and we don't know if they're safe or if they're poisonous, right? We have a choice. We can educate ourselves. We can figure out if this is safe or if this is poison. So when I see this card after I do a little dance to Belle Bib DeVoe, I think about being educated. What's crossing our path? is the opportunity to recognize when things could be poison and to use that to slow down, to do our research, to ask our questions, and to make an educated response, not a gut response, not just say, oh, this has got to be, this is going to be terrible for me, or, okay, this is safe because I don't want to learn more. This poison card is a reminder to pause, to reflect, to research and to learn before we eat. So who we are, we're finding calm, we're finding peace, we're finding tranquility. What's crossing our path is a reminder to not just make an automatic gut decision, but to take the time to find out, to make an educated decision if the mushrooms, if this decision is good or bad. And then what's coming is autumn. We're sitting here in the middle of August, and what's coming is autumn. I feel like there's, there's things I could read into this, but I'm not feeling called to do so. I'm just feeling called to say, lean into what we know. And what we know is no matter what else happens in the world, the seasons are going to change. No matter what else happens in the world, the sun is going to come up tomorrow. The, lo the logic of saying that what's coming next or the guidance for this in August with autumn being our guidance is just lean in. Trust what you know. Trust the cycles of the world that you know. Trust your relationships that you know. Trust what you know and let the stress of everything else just fall away. The way we become tranquil, the way we make decisions in a smart way, the way we do both of these things is to find solace and comfort in what we absolutely know for sure. And in the middle of August, what I absolutely know for sure in the Northern Hemisphere is that autumn is coming. Friends, I thank you so much for sharing in this deck tour with me today. There will be um, more coming. And if you decide to do a Reiki healing session with me, each one will end with a card draw whether that is a moon circle or a one-on-one -on -one session. And this is one of the decks that I may choose from. Hope you have a great day. Remember, autumn is coming. And I'll see you soon.